So, who will be your starter? The young trainer grinned as I showed him the three Pokemon. Snivy, the Grass Snake Grass type. Tepig, the Fire Pig Fire type. And Oshawott, the Sea Otter Water type. He examined them carefully, looking them over, noting every little detail about their appearance. He giggled at Snivy, her head held high and mighty. When Oshawa demonstrated his flexibility and promptly fell over, he clapped and laughed. Tepig's shyness and almost panicked look caused the boy to frown, stroking the Pokemon's head comfortingly and whispering kind words. Eventually, he looked up at me, eyes sparkling with happiness and excitement, as he pointed towards Snivy. So, you want Snivy? I asked, holding out the young Pokemon's Pokeball. The trainer nodded fervently, his eagerness clear even without words. Laughing, I sent him on his way, supplying him with a Pokedex as well. Thank you, Professor, he chirped, waving goodbye wildly with his new partner swaying on his shoulder. I laughed and waved back. So the daily routine went. New trainers would come, practically wetting themselves with excitement, choose their starter, and leave. I must have given away ten Snivy alone that day, along with seven Oshawott. Only one trainer had chosen Tepig. As the day drew to a close, I sighed, finally grabbing a well-deserved break. I heard whimpers and cries coming from the back room, but I ignored them. I was used to it. Occasionally, a squeal would echo through. I sighed again, this time in frustration. I must remember to soundproof the walls, I thought. I stood from my chair, making my way to the Pokemon pens where all the unselected starters were placed until needed. Turning left, I entered the area reserved for Tepig. Hundreds upon hundreds of cages surrounded me, each containing said Pokémon. Terrified cries barraged me with pleas for help. Some of them were showing signs of evolution. They had been here for that long. I drowned out the noise. As I stated before, I was used to it. The sounds of heavy thumps resounded within the walls. As I walked towards the far end, my mind wandered. The fact was... No one wanted Tepigs anymore. They were outdated. Old news. We simply didn't have the space to keep them all. Heck, as it was, the entire place felt like an oven from all their inner heat. I avoided the small ruby pools around the area. Some had already congealed into a thick, sticky goo and... I didn't need it getting all over my clothes. Talk about frightening the children. I would look like a mad scientist. As I reached the end of the hall, I purposely kept my eyes straight ahead. To look to either side, you either had to have a strong stomach or really, really, really like gore. Even then, you'd get queasy, I'm sure. Finally making it to my destination, I lingered outside the room. Terrified squeals and cries of pain flew out of the room, along with grunts of exertion and the heavy falling of something. I watched the shadow that fell from the room into the hallway. An object was lifted, poised, 
and brought down with a loud thwomp. The last squeal was silenced. I waited a few more seconds, stealing my stomach, before entering. I hated this room. Splatters of Arceus knows what covered every wall, and you'd have to levitate or fly if you wanted to avoid the mess all over the floor. A certain table right at the far back was the worst, though. It used to have a fine pine surface, polished and shining in the flicker of lamplight. I knew because I had been the one to buy it. Looking at it now, though, you never would have guessed that the rusty brown staining the wood wasn't part of some morbid paint job. That the thick coating of congealed liquid hadn't come with the package. Standing in front of said table was a man, wiping off a cleaver with an apron that must have been white once, but was now as tainted as the rest of the room. He grinned eerily at me. Hey, Prof, this'll be a good haul, he boomed, motioning to the large and bulking sack at his feet. I'll be sure to send you some of the produce. I could only grin weakly. His laughter boomed around the walls, sending the tepig in the other room into hysterics. He laughed at their distress. Heh <laughs> Professor, thanks for the business. As he left the room, he turned back to me with a smirk, whispering, I'm sure my customers will love these sausages.